my name is Valentina V and welcome back to set. You like that? I thought of it. It's the new name of the show. Today we are in this house. We're gonna make it look like it is elsewhere using several green screen techniques. We're gonna take it from this to this to this. Let's go. Back to set, it has a nice ring to right. it. Right, I'm here with uh, <laughs> my director, Tway. And, nice to meet you. And uh, we kind of want to tell you a little bit about what back to set means for us. We're still going to be bringing you the film set knowledge and wisdom that we've always been doing. But a lot of times you don't get sort of the input creatively from the director or the DP. Yeah, the process matters just as much as the final product. And the final product is always in service of the lesson. All right, Tway, why would somebody need to shoot with a green screen outside a window? Let's say you gotta do reshoots. You don't have the money to go out into an expensive location. So that's kind of what we're trying to replicate right here. This is what studios are doing all the time anyways. They're building sets on big sound stages where the area around is a big green screen. We're doing the indie version of this because it's like a house that anybody could potentially live in. We're putting a green screen on side to show you the technique of making this any location in the world. All right, we have two setups today, right. a daytime and a nighttime. There's a story where a woman is trying to get this old CB radio to work to communicate with civilization, but obviously it's not working. We want to shoot the scene out in the woods. We just didn't have time to set this one scene up while we were there. And then for the second scenario, it's for this typewriter company that's based in Italy. And obviously they don't have the money to send us to shoot in Venice. Really was hoping out for that one, but <laughs> we'll have to make the most out of it in the same exact location that you see here. I'll leave you to it. I'm just gonna be over at Crafty for the next three hours. And sure. when I come back, uh, let's get the shot up, okay? Okay. Cool. Can I have a, like a protein bar? Uh, I think you, we only have Welch's, oh, I'm sorry. darn. This is the window that we're working with, and you might be thinking, why do we need such a giant green screen? This is 12 by 12 feet for this small window. Well, that's because we need some distance, okay? We need distance not only to place the lights that are gonna affect our scene, but also we need lights on the green screen because without any lights, look, it's green, has a light on it. I turn it off, saving. Now what? It's black, you can't see it, striking. With the light on, now you can actually see the green screen. So whenever you make your plan for what lights to bring in your kit, always remember that you need something to light the green screen with. So this is my normal green screen for when I have no money to rent anything. And literally this is just green fabric from Joann's. You still have to stretch it out because you're gonna get all of these wrinkles. Just take two stands, make a frame and then stretch it out and then put clips on the ends. You can also get a steamer and steam this as well. Luckily, we have a 600D back there, 600X Pro over here. Now with just one light, you can see that there is, it's not even. That's bad because when you chroma key inside your program, you're gonna be chroma keying one color. So the color here is different than the color here. Not only that, but you start seeing all of these like folds and wrinkles. So you wanna have a second light to even that out. So one way to know that your green screen is lit evenly is to meter it. You can also do this in your monitor, but in my case, because I have that table, this window, it's a lot easier to do it out here instead of looking at the monitor. After we light our green screen, it's time to replace it with our background. But wait, is it even possible to preview what we see on the green screen while we're on set? So this is a little hack that I learned a couple years ago. There are some more like heavy duty programs that you can live key on, but you can also live key very simply on OBS. So all you need to do is have a capture card, an HDMI out from your camera or your monitor. I need the LUT from the monitor in order to be able to key. And then so that comes out into my computer. I'm able to have the preview here on my screen so I can add a chroma effect. So the first thing I do when I'm trying to match a plate is I pop the plate up and I try to analyze where is the lighting naturally coming from here. So in this case, it's just the sun and it's coming from that side because you can see it peeking through all of these translucent leaves. And then we think about the story. So she's fixing a radio because her phone broke because there's no electricity. So I'm not gonna have lights inside the house on. Everything's gonna be from the window that's gonna be our guiding light. What I wanna do is place another light down here and then place a reflector up here. 
by reflecting it into a nice white reflector, it's just gonna create that soft daylight glow. It actually looks really good. <laughs> yeah, do you like that? Oh, yeah. Okay, so when she starts cheating to her left, most of her body's in shadow because we are doing a far side key. We could maybe do a little bit of ambient because right now we have a 300X in here. But if I turn it up all the way, it's gonna be really bright, striking like that. So I'm gonna turn it all the way down to like a 3.5. So maybe a little bit more and it still looks realistic. And you can see right here, I have the 300X and it's just pointing straight up into the ceiling because when I scouted it, I saw that this had these like warmish, whitish ceilings. So they're kind of a perfect bounce material for me. I think the shot looks real, really real already. The last thing I did was added this little bounce over here. It's a two by four white bounce. Because she's turning away from this light, it's a very far side key. I just wanted a little bit more on the front of her face. Not too much, because this is still a drama, but I didn't want it to be completely black. This isn't, you know, Game of Thrones. Scene, 17 beta, take one, mark. I actually really liked that shot. I'm so glad that we had that preview. And now to the middle of Europe, let's head to Venice, Italy and do a nighttime scene. So essentially we have two light sources, the moonlight from above, which is this like soft, dark blue diffused moonlight, and then this warm light from below. That's what we're gonna try to imitate this time around. The first step to that is actually moving that green screen, getting it positioned and lighting it so that I can go ahead and do my magic on the computer, pop in that background. This storyline, it doesn't necessarily mean that she doesn't have any sort of lighting, that she doesn't have electricity. In fact, she actually fell asleep at her desk. So it makes sense to have a little bit of light inside the room. So I'm gonna use a color changing light bulb and place it inside of a fixture that's visible on the screen. The idea is a typewriter commercial, right? So it's supposed to feel very warm and inviting, not cold and panicky like the last one. It's actually the complete opposite of the last one that we just did but it's in the same location. Isn't that crazy? That the powers of green screen. <laughs> <laughs> what happens a lot with reflective surfaces when you have a green screen is that green will reflect off those surfaces. So in this case, we have this beautiful wood, but it's reflecting. So what do we have to get rid of it? Let's see, we have carpets, a black curtain, it's kind of shiny. No. I have an idea. Okay, I have an idea, maybe. hold on. Moses. I saw him wearing a poncho earlier. Hey Moses, do you mind if we borrow your poncho? Thank you, do you know what we're using it for? For what? You don't need to know. Listen, you gotta work with what you got. What you got and use your brain. What I like about this is that not only does it tamp down on the reflection, it's just a really cool pattern. The little adjustments here, of course, we've kept this the same. We moved the CRLS up to the middle of the window and we have a 600X that has CTB doubled up because the moonlight in that clip looked bluer. So I wanna imitate the moonlight in that clip. And that is pointing directly at the CRLS. And these are our beautiful lights of Venice. What's not so great is that it's picking up on all of these little imperfections in the glass, even though we cleaned the glass. They come from years of bacteria and heat. Things like this, we can mask out, no problem. I wanna add a little bit more to this scene, so I wanna do the reverse, actually. And we're gonna use one of my favorite techniques. Can't wait to show you. We're moving the camera and shifting the green screen over, but of course we're confronted with the bane of every cinematographer's existence. So before we had these Novas, but the problem is when we're shooting from that side of the window, we're gonna have reflections. And instead, we're gonna take tiny little MC lights and put them over here. Those are the lights that are gonna act on her face. We looked at the rest of the shot with the lighting that we set up previously, but there was just one little problem. 
I tried really hard to make the moonlight work. All right, I did, I truly did. But this moonlight canceled out this Nova. So that front window pane, it was very bright and white and we did everything we could. So it's gone, it's out of here. And I think the shot looks better, what do you think? This is with the moonlight and this is without. Let me know in the comments. Even though you might think it destroys the lighting continuity, it goes to show that the audience will never notice and you can get away with it if the shot looks really good. All right, let's shoot this thing, let's go. We finished, I think. Yeah. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> We're trying to be quiet. It's really late. We're trying to whisper because the neighbors are aware of our presence and... But there's something we can't forget to do now. Yeah, we're gonna do one last thing. Listen, if you have any questions about filmmaking, if you have something that you want us to answer, mm -hmm. I mean, try to stump us, who knows? Exactly. Anything filmmaking related, film set questions, yeah. um, even questions you have about this episode, leave them in the comments. I have this bag that doesn't have unbleached muslin, unfortunately. It has the comment questions that we prepared. This is the perfect <laughs> bag for this. All right. That's well by bag, of course. Question. So the question is, give an example of an expensive filmmaking thing and a cheaper version of it. Mm. Hmm. I think we just kind of used one, right? A green screen and then the cheaper version of a green screen. Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, we used a lot of these CRLS reflectors, these expensive um, sheets. You can also, if you don't have that, you can get a pop-up five-in-one reflector. I've seen people get like small four-inch mirrors and then stick a baby plate in the back with some gaff tape and then just stuck that on a C-stand and that totally works too. That's it for this Good episode. Job on an episode of well done. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one. Happy shooting. Happy shooting. Four minute film school. It's no longer four minutes because it never has been. Yeah, so you guys in the comments can stop saying 16 minute film school or 30 minute film school.